Hey, this is Kat here to talk to you about animation using timers. Timers allow you to have a little bit of code and that code will execute and then after a set amount of time the sort of the timer tick will happen it'll loop back and execute that code again and then after a little bit of time it will loop back and execute that code again and again and by allowing it to change based on a, a time frame, so like every 10 seconds, uh, we can create the illusion of animation. Well, I don't know if that's really an illusion, but we can make things look animated. Okay, so to explain this a little bit better, let's just imagine that we have an applet. And in that applet, we have a little ball. Let's draw it up top left corner. And what we're gonna do is every 10 seconds, we're gonna change the ball's position so we need to, we're going to aim to have this ball moving diagonally across the screen. So every 10 seconds or whatever our timer increment is, we're going to increase the value of x by 10 and y by 10. So we would draw our ball top left corner and then we would wait. And in a second or 10 seconds, whatever we said, we would then increase the x position of our ball by 10. So we dunk, 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 10 and we would increase the y position by 10 dunk, 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 and we would draw it in the next spot. So I've used a different color to make it a little bit more obvious. Um, and then we wait our timer tick yet again. Uh, and I, I know I went from saying 10 seconds to one second because really in computing terms, 10 seconds is a really long time. So let's wait another second. And after that second is up, we're going to increase the x position by 10 and the y position by 10 and then we're going to draw our ball and then we're going to wait for yet another increment. Um, so really that's how it happens and what we can view these things as, um, just to show you how I'll be doing it on the computer, you can think of the ball as having an x, sorry not very clear there, and the ball as having a y and that's its current position and 10 is the value that we're changing it by each time. Now by putting it 10 and 10, obviously it's gonna have a nice perfect little diagonal. Obviously I could have made it five and seven or 10 and 32. You can change those to be whatever you like, but we'll start with just really basic ones of 10 and 10. And you can view those as the velocity. So I'm gonna say ball x velocity and ball y velocity. And I'm calling them velocity because that's sort of the speed at which they move because that's how far they move each time we go through the tick. Now obviously moving 10 pixels each time could end up looking quite, um, you know, quite pixely, quite staticky, and you can tweak these as we go. But for the moment, I'm going to try and replicate this diagram on the computer. Okay, so I'm in Eclipse now, and what I did was created a project called Animation and then a class called Timer underscore one dot Java. And I've set it up with just the basic tools that you normally have in any other standard applet. So from here, I'm going to start talking about exactly how we are going to incorporate the timer. So first of all, we're actually going to import two new packages. So we're gonna start by importing Java dot util dot timer and java dot util dot timer task okay then going down into the class I'm going to declare a timer object I'm going to call it timer I know that's not very uh, uh, not very imaginative and we talked about having a ball x uh, sorry, we need to specify the data type. We're going to have a ball x. Let's start it off at 10 comma 10. Oops, sorry. Ball x is 10. Let's copy that. Paste it, paste it. So we're going to change one to be the ball y. Then we're going to have the ball x velocity and the ball y velocity. Okay. So really boring to start with, it's all the same value. Now going down into init, 
Now actually let's just go down to paint first. I'm just going to comment out that timer and in paint I'm going to have g.fill oval. Now remember that by default this is black. If you want to change the colour then by all means change the colour. Uh, and I'm going to print this at ball x ball y and then I need to pass in the size so I'm going to make it 20 comma 20 and no more arguments and just to make sure that's all fine I'm just going to run it and it should draw a ball on the screen there we go big black ball really really boring so let's go back and uncomment that timer and set up the timer itself so in init we're going to type in timer equals new timer because remember it is an object so it needs to be instantiated and then I'm going to give you some code and I'm not really going to explain it a great deal um, but I'm just going to tell you what to type. So first of all you set timer.schedule and this is about scheduling an activity so you've got to give it the activity that's going to happen multiple times as well as the time that that activity is going to happen and what we do is we say new timer task in here and then we have an open brace I'm going to spread it out let's get rid of it's automatically put that in for me so I've got new timer task open close brackets because that's a method comma oh sorry no comma um, I've got my open brace there and inside that I'm going to type public void run that's going to have a Ugh, can't spell today, jeepers creepers, run. And I'm going to put some content in here in a minute, stuff that will happen. So I've got the close brace of that one, the close brace of the timer task, and then what we do is we have a comma, and then the first number is the initial delay before that timer runs for the first time and then and that's in milliseconds so if you don't want it to happen start happening straight away you set that one to be a bigger number then you have the number between the ticks so if we want it to be one second that's a thousand milliseconds and then we have our semicolon now I can run this and hopefully I won't get any errors but I also won't get anything happening so it should still just draw that ball on the screen okay so that's a good thing to do though, once you've copied a bit of code that you're unfamiliar with, you've typed it out, just run your program, make sure that nothing's broken. So stuff that will happen. The stuff that I want to have happen is every time the timer ticks, I want to increase the ball x by the velocity. So I say the ball x to be the ball x plus the ball x velocity. And I'm going to do the same with the y value. So copy and paste is your friend here people. Okay, make sure that if you do copy and paste that you set all the x's to x's and then all the y's to y's, uh, otherwise you get some random things happening. Um, and then here what we need to do is we need to actually say that paint has to happen again. So we chuck in a repaint and let's just save that and now if this works every second which in computing terms is still a really long time every second our ball should move 10 pixels to the right and down so it should form a diagonal line there we go our ball's moving and it doesn't seem to be moving very smoothly and that's fine so what can we do to make it happen more smoothly I would say you can do two things you can change the step value, so you change the velocity to a smaller number so it, it doesn't move so, so blocky each time. So let's maybe make that 3 and 3. Um, and we'll just run that. It should move kind of smoother, but really it's so slow that it still looks rubbish. So this one here is the refresh rate. So let's actually just simplify things. Let's call it refresh rate. And remember this is in milliseconds. Uh, let's try um, 500. 
and we'll replace that with the word refresh rate. And let's see how that works. Okay, so that's starting to look a little bit smoother. Let's uh, let's go for a few different values. Let's go um, two and two. And I'll make my refresh rate 100. So every tenth of a second. Okay, and that's looking a little bit more like proper movement. Now, so far we've, we've done animation. So we did what we set out to achieve, only we haven't made anything fun. So come back for the next video and what we'll do is make this a little bit more useful. See you next time.